pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Vietnam Veterans News Podcast. News of interest about Vietnam veterans from a Vietnam veteran. Now, here's your host, Mac Payne. This is Mac Payne here with episode 1809 of the Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. News about the Vietnam War and the brave veterans who serve there, as told to you by yours truly, a Vietnam veteran. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about another tremendous representative of the Vietnam veteran generation, one as great as any that ever heeded the call of duty from its country. Vietnam veteran Joe Kernan typifies all the greatness of that generation. He not only served his country in Vietnam, both in South Vietnam and in a prison camp in North Vietnam, he came home and continued serving his country. Among other things, he served as mayor of South Bend, Indiana. At one time, he served as the governor of that great state of Indiana. On Wednesday, July the 29th, 2020, Joe Kernan passed away. On this episode today, I am celebrating his life and service to his country. Most of the reports today about his passing talk about his service to his state. He did some pretty amazing things when he was serving his country over there in Vietnam. Back on March the 28th, 2013, the South Bend Tribune newspaper wrote a story about Joe Kernan's service to his country in Vietnam. That's the story I'd like you to hear on this Vietnam Veteran News Podcast. When you hear stories like Joe's, it just makes you so proud to be an American and so thankful that there are Americans like Joe Kernan who are willing to step forward and serve their country. Thick or thin. The title of the story I'm going to share with you that gives background on Joe Kernan's service over in Vietnam is... On 40th anniversary of his flight out of Vietnam, Joe Kernan counted his blessings. I'll guarantee you he counted them. This story was submitted by Bob Blake, a writer for the South Bend Tribune. He did a great job. That's one of the reasons I'm sharing his story with you. Let's take a look at what Bob Blake wrote about this tremendous representative of the great Vietnam veteran generation. Dateline, South Bend, Indiana. There are some days a person never forgets. Forty years ago, March the 28th, 1973, was one of those days for Joe Kernan. Kernan, then a naval flight officer, had just endured 11 months as a prisoner of war toward the end of the Vietnam War. But on this early spring morning, Kernan and 67 other former POWs were at Hanoi's Gia Lam Airport. They were escorted by Air Force officials to a waiting C-141 transport plane. We got aboard and taxied out and started to roll, Kernan said. When the pilot said, wheels are in the well, that's when everybody went nuts. A big hoot and holler went up. For Kernan, the former South Bend mayor and Indiana governor, it was the end of a long ordeal. Kernan followed in the footsteps of his grandfather and father when he enlisted in the Navy in the spring of 1969. I had decided I wanted to join the Navy and wanted to fly, he said. It was the opportunity to do something I wanted to do instead of sitting around and waiting to get drafted. After completing Aviation Officers Candidate School in Florida and navigation training in Georgia, Kernan was given his wings and assigned to a flight squadron. He spent more than a year training aboard his RA-5C Vigilante Reconnaissance Aircraft before he was assigned to a fleet squadron and deployed to Vietnam in January 1972 aboard the USS Kitty Hawk. We did two things over there. We did road reconnaissance, which was searching for enemy traffic primarily along the Ho Chi Minh Trail, Kernan said. 
would bring our film back to the ship, it would be developed, and if there was traffic that merited some kind of attention, we would have other aircraft that would go after those targets. The second thing we did was bomb damage assessment. That was to determine whether a target had been sufficiently destroyed or whether we needed to go back and hit it again. On May the 7th, 1972, on Kernan's 26th combat mission, his RA-5C Vigilante took off with its F-4 fighter escort for a bomb damage assessment run. After the assessment, squadron commanders asked Kernan to do some road reconnaissance along Vietnam's Highway 1. The main highway. I spent a lot of time on Highway 1 in Vietnam. Of course, it was in the southern portion of the country. And if I must say, it was not much of a main highway. Continuing. We came over our target. It was a truck park, a staging area for troops and tanks and trucks. We took pictures of that target, and as we continued down Highway 1, we were about halfway through our mission and got hit by anti-aircraft fire, Kernan recalled. We got hit in the tail. The nose pitched down violently. We came right out of it. As we rolled wings level, the nose pitched down again, and we were pointed at the ground. I looked at the altimeter. I had 2,900 feet. I made the decision to eject, not knowing anything other than I didn't want to ride it in. The cockpit filled with light, and Kernan was flung out at forces approaching 23 Gs from the aircraft, rendering him unconscious from the force of the ejection. He landed in a small village. I don't imagine Joe received a very friendly welcome from the villagers. Continuing. When I got up, people were coming from everywhere. I was surrounded and was getting kicked around, he said. I was carrying a 38 revolver with flares in it. So you're not going to start a land war with six rounds of small flares. Kernan was quickly subdued, stripped to his underwear, and brought to Hanoi. He did time in two of the most infamous POW prisons of the war, the Hanoi Hilton, and the one dubbed the Zoo, he said. There he would remain for 11 months. Until the peace agreements were signed, the C-141s allowed in to remove the former prisoners. For seven weeks, Kernan was listed as missing in action. The first months, Kernan was kept in isolation. Eventually, another prisoner was brought in with him. The two discreetly talked. He said... Your escort lost you guys, and you are presumed dead. That was the worst day of my life, Kernan said. I assume my family thought I was dead. The Navy thought I was dead, and if anybody thinks I'm dead, there's no reason for these guys to keep me alive. It wasn't until three months later I found out my family knew I was alive. Kernan's path home came through the Philippines, Hawaii, and eventually Andrews Air Force Base outside Washington, D.C. After 90 days leave, is that all they gave him, 90 days? Pardon me. Continuing. Kernan spent another 18 months in the Navy, even though he could have gotten out at any time. Wouldn't trade it for anything, he said. I loved it. Made great friends. That is such a true statement. That applies to probably everybody who served in the military, especially in Vietnam. In the previous episode, John Shoemaker talked about the bonds he made with the people he served with in the 196th Infantry Brigade in South Vietnam. Continuing. Kernan spent the past four decades observing his shoot-down day as a nod to those less fortunate the 58,276 soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who never made it out of Vietnam alive. Every May the 2nd, I play golf with friends, Kernan said. Of the things I missed in Vietnam, what I missed most was pizza and beer on Friday nights. So after playing golf, I go to Rocco's and eat pizza and drink some beer. Ah, what a life. Playing golf and enjoying pizza and beer at Rocco's. Continuing. 
I've been doing that a long time now. It's a day when it could have gone the other way, very easily and with greater probability. With flight crews in Vietnam that got shot down, three out of four did not come home. Kernan said it's hard to believe it's been 40 years. Some days it seems like it was 100 years ago. Some days it feels like last week, he said. I got the big break. I have no regrets, no second thoughts about the things I've done over the last 40 years. I count my blessings. The odds are that I would not be here. If I'd waited to eject another second to punch out, I would not be here. That is the story of Joe Kernan, Vietnam veteran who spent time in the Hanoi Hilton and who spent time as the mayor of South Bend, Indiana, and the governor of the great state of Indiana. Joe Kernan, who passed away on July the 29th, 2020, I hereby issue you an official Vietnam Veteran News Podcast salute for your service to your country, both in Vietnam and back home in Indiana. Rest in peace. This is Mac Payne closing out episode 1809 of the Vietnam Better News Podcast. Thank you so much for listening to these stories. You are cordially invited to return again soon and often to listen to more that will be coming your way on this podcast, the Vietnam Veteran News.